Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. Thank you so much for joining us for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. My daughter Annette is with me again today, and we're going to talk about something I call this the eyebrow raising series. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about the world that was on today's broadcast. Now, somebody might say, well, what in the world are you talking about? The world that was. Well, let me read you a passage here right quickly. It says uh, <clears throat> in the uh, third chapter of Second Peter, it says this, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts, saying, Where is the promise of His coming? Uh, for since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Now, there's a lot of, a lot of people say that. Well, it, the world's going on just like it was from the beginning of creation. When you read Genesis 1, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. didn't say when the beginning was. Most people believe it was 6,000 years ago. And this is where the rub comes in because you remember in Little Rock, Arkansas in the 80s, mid 80s, somewhere along there, they had a, what they called a science creation trial. The people that didn't believe in the Darwin theory was trying to get them to teach the uh, creationists uh, uh, in the schools. And so they had a trial about it. And, and I listened to that, and you listened to it too, and you know I decided that the creationists were just about as wrong as the Darwin theory because they kept saying, well, the Bible says it's only uh, uh, 6,000 years old. But the Bible teaches uh, different from that. Uh, it doesn't tell you how old it is. It could be millions of years old, billions of years old. In the beginning, God created. It didn't say when the beginning was. And then it says the earth was void without form. And uh, that's, that's where we pick up on it today. I want to read Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, if you come down just a few verses here, and it says God called the dry land earth. <laughs> when He got rid of the water, He called the dry land earth. Now, the very fact that it's called earth, it means God created the heavens and the earth as dry land. He created it that way. Where did this water come from? There's a flood before Noah's flood that destroyed the world that then was totally eliminated from the face of the earth, that whole world system. Destroyed all the trees, destroyed all the fish, destroyed everything that had been created because Satan was in rule of that planet. He was the anointed cherub, and he fell and became Satan. And uh, then it, there was a destruction that happened to this earth. It literally turned inside out and destroyed that whole thing. Now, when it says the earth was without form and void, the, when it says was there, the word was is almost always translated became void. Wasn't created that way. And the scriptures tell us, Jeremiah tells us it wasn't created void. Then it, how did it become void? There's, uh, this is what they call, I guess, the gap theory. There's a gap between just in the beginning. Then here the, the earth is flooded. Well, earth means dry land. You can't have dry land if it's flooded. So then there was a catastrophic event that uh, uh, took place uh, back when that world was destroyed. It's called the world that was. Peter talks about that. But uh, when you follow this in the Genesis account, it says everything produced after its kind. And it's important to know that uh, what, what God has done here is he stopped this thing that Satan had going. See, that world was ruled by angels, but this world is not ruled by angels. And uh, when, when we see what Peter says about it, we go over here then to uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, and he says this, uh, For this they're willingly ignorant of, that the word of God, uh, that 
the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and earth which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. The world that then was couldn't be the world that now is, or they wouldn't have said it was the world that then was. Uh, the whole, whole system was destroyed. All the trees, all the fish, all the animals, but not in Noah's flood. So this, this brings up some interesting things. Well, it really does because it becomes very apparent that the word there in the Hebrew, when it says, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Well, yes, he did. But that word there in the Hebrew, I've looked it up, and it, it really does indicate became, and the earth became without form and void. So it is very indicative of some cataclysmic, catastrophic thing that happened on this planet that rendered it totally uninhabitable. And I think that's also very clear when you go to uh, verse 28 of chapter 1, and when it's talking about God created man, it says, uh, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Now you can't replenish something unless it was first plenished and then it all disappeared. And so it indicates that there was something that just totally wiped everything off of the earth to where it was, this planet was void. Now, what, like what you said that raises the eyebrows about this whole thing is that so-called Christians believe that if you're gonna believe the Bible, you must believe the earth is only 6,000 years old. And that's just not so because there is obviously a gap. Now, why don't we have any information about what happened between verse one and verse two? Well, we do have. You're giving some of the scriptures about what happened. Lucifer ruled, God wiped it out. It was completely annihilated. But we don't have the whole story. There's probably books and books of information about what took place on this planet between verse one and two. We just don't have the complete picture. But we are given, like in Peter, information that tells us that the world that was perished but this one, this system, is a completely different one. Yes. Uh, it's very evident when you study the scriptures in Genesis, uh, you find that God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness, let them have dominion. Over the fish of the sea, the fowl there, the cattle over all the earth, Psalms 8 says, over all the work of his hands. So God gave mankind dominion over this planet. The world it was was ruled by angels. And, and uh, I believe it's in the book of Hebrews. It says uh, the world to come is not in subjection to angels. Uh, the, this, this world is uh, angels don't rule this world, and uh, the angels rule that world. But when the, the anointed cherub fell, uh, you have to realize that when you get into the third chapter here of Genesis, that uh, Adam... When he was put in the garden, Adam and Eve, when they were cre uh, created and put in the garden, uh, Satan had already been cast out of heaven, and he showed up on the earth. The scripture said he'd already ruled over nations, mm -hmm. and we'll get into that in a little bit. Well, I the question is, where Isaiah. the nation, where the nations come from yeah, that he ruled the over? the nations? And, it wasn't six thousand years ago. And he said, "I'll exalt my throne above the stars of God, the clouds of heaven." Well, the clouds were there, the stars were there. And, and, uh, uh, but he come down to the earth. He's cast out of heaven. Now you can read about it in, in the 12th chapter of uh, Revelation. And most people get confused because it, it, the 12th chapter of Revelation is an informational chapter. It's not in sequence of the way things happen. And, and it said uh, uh, he was cast down. And, and it says that salvation, now is salvation come. Well, salvation came, uh, has already come, right? And, and people say that's a future event. It's going to happen, you know, in the, uh, before the tribulation's over or something. No, it's already happened because salvation came. But 
when you study this, you find out that here's Adam and Eve. Uh, they bowed their knee to Satan and, and listened to him, allowed him to influence them. And therefore, uh, this is a recreation or refurbishing of the earth uh, that, you know, once was inhabited, but this, the total thing has been destroyed. Now, we had one of our magazines we put out, you know, Concepts of Faith years ago, we had a picture of, of this world sitting at a, at, in a chair and had his legs crossed, big old fat world, you know, and there was a, a scientist with a microscope, I mean, not a microscope, but a big magnifying, magnifying glass, glass looking at it and, and, and interviewing him. And, and the world said, well, actually, I, I'm, I'm quite old, but I had a facelift about 6,000 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and that's actually what happened. When you mm -hmm. study the Bible, that's what it teaches. But now, like I say, if you don't study it from that angle, you'll never notice it. And, and when people say, well, you know, uh, uh, this creation, this is, uh, they, they kept saying, well, the world is just only 12,000 years old. Well, they have rocks and things and ways they can measure it. Scientists are not that stupid. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, there is no real conflict between the Word of God and real science right. or the real Word of God and science because it proves that Satan ruled over this planet. After he fell, he ruled over it. He, he, he had it in such a mess that it, it was totally destroyed. And where did the dinosaurs come for, mm -hmm. from? They terrorized the earth and, and uh, man-eating animals big as a barn. saber tooth tiger. It's a perversion of what Satan perverted, the things that God created. And, uh, and it was totally all destroyed. And uh, it, you come up with uh, this revelation here that uh, it, it just hard for somebody to get hold of it if they haven't studied it. Now, let, me, let me show you a, a few of the things right here in the notes. It says, uh, Lucifer's flood, earth was made waste. In Noah's flood, earth was not made waste. The trees were still there. The fish were still there. It and, was, and, and that flood was survivable, and yeah. it was survived by Noah and other animals. That's it. And uh, in Lucifer's flood, the earth was made empty. In Noah's flood, was not made empty. It's 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 amazing when you uh, uh, turn over there to Jeremiah the uh, the fourth chapter and the twenty third verse, where it talks about no light. Uh, because in Lucifer's flood, no light from heaven. And in the uh, Noah's flood, there was light from heaven. Genesis 8, 6 through 22. Well, here in Jeremiah 4, 23, it says, I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form, and void in the heavens, and they had no light. Yeah. And then there's another place, and I think it's in Jeremiah, that says God did not create the earth void. Mm hmm he created it to be inhabited. So how did it become void? Uh, it's between Genesis 1, 1 and 1, 2, where the earth was covered with water because the very fact that he called it earth means dry land, it wasn't covered with water. But in verse 2, it was covered with water. And the Spirit of God brooded up over it. And then God said, uh, let there be light. So he called light out of darkness. Uh, there was no light from heaven on, on, on that destructive destroyed earth, the world that was. Uh, no day nor night. In Lucifer's flood was day or night. Vegeta vegetation was not destroyed. See, when there's total darkness, it destroys all vegetation. Mm -hmm. And uh, no continued abating of waters in Lucifer's flood. Uh, continual abating of waters in the earth. Uh, evaporation and, and so on. It took, what was it, 155 days before the water abated from the earth or, or something like that. And, and it said it hasted away. In other words, it was rebuked by God uh, in, in Lucifer flood and it went away. Uh, water's taken off the earth in one day. Uh, and then months of water's abating from the earth uh, under Noah's flood. 
So, so there's just all kinds of things that show up in the scriptures when you begin to study it that uh, people just, uh, that's the reason I call it the eyebrow raising series, is it's important to study the Word of God and show yourself approved, a workman that needs not be ashamed. Well, it's obvious that people think there was only one flood here on this planet, but it becomes very obvious from studying the scripture that there was more than one flood. And what the archaeologists are discovering is they're discovering all the history on this planet that took place between Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and verse 2. They're finding evidence, they're finding uh, the fossils, they're finding, uh, they're able to carbon date the rocks and the different things, find the different layers. So this, this planet has a very long history and more than likely there are things that we've not even dreamed of that this planet has gone through that we don't have any record of. And so the, the archeologists, the scientists, they're finding these things. But then those who look at the Bible and think there's one flood, one time the earth was plenished, then they're left saying, well, the scientists and the Bible do not agree. Yeah. But what they fail to recognize that there is thousands, if not millions of years of history between Genesis verse one and verse two. Yeah, uh, and, and for the people that, that don't take the time to search these things out, they're gonna believe what they've been taught. I did I, when I first heard about this uh, and the Dake's Annotated Bible is is uh, where you can get all this information that he, he's done hundreds of thousands of hours of research and uh, you, when I heard about it I thought nah I, I don't much believe that but when I went through referencing the scriptures that he gives mm -hmm. in the notes I was fully persuaded because you can see it very clearly when you study uh, all of the scriptures that's that to it. Now, in Jeremiah, the fourth chapter, let me read you here. It says, verse 23, I beheld the earth and lo, it was without form and void and the, and the heavens and they had no light. No time upon this earth when that happened. It was the world that was. There was no light. I beheld the mountains, lo, they trembled, the hills moved lightly. I beheld and lo, there was no man and all the birds of heaven had fled. There's never a time on this planet since Adam was put, placed on it that there was not a man on this planet. Or birds. This is referring to the world it was. And behold, lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof broken down the presence of the Lord and of his fierce anger. And, and thus, thus hath the Lord the whole lands, thus saith the Lord, uh, for thus hath the Lord said, the whole land shall be desolate, yet will I not make a full end. So there's some things that's happened to this planet that, you know, you don't just come across every day, but if you really go to studying the scriptures, uh, let me turn here to Isaiah. Isaiah had, had some things to say about uh, the fall of, of uh, Lucifer, and uh, it talked about talk to the prince of Tyre, and you think he's talking to a man, but some of the things that he said, it cannot be, uh, it wouldn't fit a man at all. Uh, he is uh, the 14th chapter. Well, if you recall, when we were talking about Daniel and about the angel coming, he said he wrestled with the prince of Persia, and that prince of Persia was not a man that he wrestled with. That's right. That was a spiritual being, so this would correlate with that. Here it talks about uh, in the uh, 14th chapter of, of Isaiah, verse 12 said, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? Now when, when Satan showed up in the Garden of Eve, Eden, he had already ruled over nations. And he said, I'll exalt my throne of us start. Well, let's go ahead and read it. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. So throne, so the he... The stars are already there. Heaven is there. And, and, he, and he has a throne. And he has a throne. So he's reigning and he's ruling. He's ruling. And I will set up on the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the height of the clouds. So the clouds are already there. Mm -hmm. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. 
Now, it seems that he is speaking this to a, to a man, but it does not fit a man. It's, it's the same as some other places. There's laws of double reference. And he said, They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms, that made the world, uh, made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof and opened not the house of the prisoners? But thou art cast out of thy grave like the bond of a branch and the remnant of, of that were slain, thrust through with the sword, and go down to the stones of the pit, and the carcass tro trodden on foot. Thou shalt not be joined with him in burial. Now, he, he is talking to a man, but he is giving information that could not fit a man. And, and, and of course, here he said, in the 12th verse, said, O Lucifer, son of the morning. So we realize that there are double references in prophecies and things, and, and this absolutely lays the groundwork for uh, him ruling over the world that was. When he showed up in the Garden of Eden, he, he had not been cast out of heaven, had to borrow the body of a serpent to manifest himself. And uh, uh, it just... And, and dominion had already been given uh, to Adam and Eve, to mankind, yeah. then to rule over the earth and to replenish it to have dominion over it, to guard and to keep it. So, and we obviously don't have the information as to how many earth years, you would call it, that Lucifer reigned over the nations. How many nations were there? We're not given that information. It could have been any number of years. So, between Genesis 1-1 uh, one, one and 1-2 one, could be any number of years to be determined. <clears throat> he speaks uh, in the Ezekiel, the 28th chapter. It says, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, say to the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, because thy heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I said in the, in the seat of God in the midst of the seas, Thou art a man and not God. Thou hast set thy heart uh, as the heart of God. Uh, he goes on now. He's, he's talking to a man, the Prince of Tyre, but this will not fit the Prince of Tyre. Double reference. Verse 9 says, Will thou say before him that slayeth thee, I am God, but thou shalt be a man, and no God in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die of the death, and go on. It goes on to say. Now come down to verse 13. Well, four, 12. Son of man, take up the lamentation upon the king of Tyre, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, that sealeth up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, and the sardis, the topaz, the uh, diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, the gold, the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes were prepared in thee from the day that thou wast created. He's a created being. This couldn't be a man. This is a created being. And he says he was in Eden, the garden of God, not the garden of Eden, Eden, the garden of God. A different world, a different system altogether. He is ruling over nations. He had all of these uh, diamonds and beryl, and he was, did, did Eve say to Satan when he showed up as a snake, oh, your diamonds are so beautiful today. <laughs> no, he'd been cast out of heaven, lost his uh, beauty, and become uh, what we call the devil or Satan. And he would like to be back here, wouldn't he? Ruling and yeah. reigning. Yes. And that's why we've had, uh, been given power over all the power of the enemy is because he would like to rule and reign and have this world again. Yeah. And he goes on to say, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast on the holy mount of God. Thou walkest up down the midst of stones of fire. Thou hast was perfect in thy way from the day that thou was created until iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled thee with the midst of violence 
and thou hast sinned, therefore I cast thee profane out of the mount of God. I will destroy the old covering cherub from the midst of the stones of fire. Thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty, and thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of brightness. I have cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled the sanctuaries of the multitude with a multitude of iniquities by the iniquity of traffic and so on. So here's God pronouncing his doom. I mean, the devil gets it on to you about, uh, about your future and, and, uh, or your past. Uh, uh, remind him of his past. <laughs> and while you're at it, remind him of his future. It's not too bright either. <laughs> <That's for laughs> Glory sure. to God. Well, we're out of time. My, my, my. Where does time go? Uh, we have a offer today that I believe will be a blessing to you. Yes, I would highly suggest uh, this two CD or two cassette series called The World That Was. It's offer number 2225, $12 plus $4 postage and handling. Our toll-free number is on the screen, 1-877-396-9400. Or you can go to our website, www.charlescaps.com. This is one of the most interesting teachings that I've ever heard, and I think it'll shed a lot of light for, for lots of people. And also, if you'd just like to have a DVD of this uh, program, you can also request that. It's program number 8158. They'll give you the price when you call. So this has been a good series today. A uh, good series. And I, I'm, I'm telling you, you, you need to get a hold of this series because uh, we cover a lot of things that we haven't covered here. And, you know, it never turns out the same anyway. But uh, when you realize that this earth could be millions of years old, uh, and you know, scientists—they—they—they're they, they're, not—they're not as as dumb as some folks think they are, you know. Uh, but the, if you study the Bible, you find out that the the Earth is millions or billions of years old. There's a lot of things that we have assumed, you know, that it's just six thousand years old. But it had a facelift about six thousand years, and that's that's why they come up with this. It's the reforming the Earth and replenishing the Earth, and. Uh, I'll tell you, this uh, we'll cover a lot of things in the, the CD series that we haven't had time to cover here. So uh, get that, and it'll be a blessing to you. Now, until next time, this is Charles and Annette Caps reminding you that the enemy is defeated, God is exalted, and Jesus is coming soon. Are you ready? Ready or not, he's coming. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.